Excellent connection. All right. Looks like now we're live finally. That's weird. Okay. Oh well. Uh, <laughs> with seven minutes delay, uh, we'll start anyways and pretend that this hasn't happened. Yeah, no, the preview is good, but. So why isn't the stream live? So I have two screens here. I have my uh, behind the scenes screens and go live. Is this working? It is. Okay, finally we're live. There you go. Hello, everyone. Sorry, that's been uh, quite a bit of a delay. Okay, I will need to mute myself, though. Okay. Cool, cool. Well, better late than never, as they say. I swear that I did all my tests and it was working just fine. But streaming and going live is not easy the beauty of the the live so we have seven minutes less that's cool we just need to cover a little bit more uh, topics now the question now is because what I did was using a different app to stream and that app will allow me to um, basically uh, share my screen and now let's see if I share this Will you see the share screen? This is the beauty of the live. You're learning with me as I go. Let's see. Let's see. And it's ne Oh yeah, you can. Okay, perfect. Fantastic. So everything is working finally. Okay, we can go back to the basics. So what I want to show you real quick is um, the space we're going to be using today, uh, which is this space right here, um, for for the workshop. This is Notion, if you've never seen it before. Uh, but before we get there, I want to just introduce this workshop to you. And so I prepared a few notes for, for myself. I hope you can hear my audio. I wish there, were, there was a way to get real-time feedback here, but fortunately we have to kind of improvise. Uh, let me see my monitors. My monitors look good. So I believe that you can hear me. And so we're going to go with that. And hopefully that's true. <laughs> um, okay, so what's going on? Uh, you here because you've seen my landing page. It looked like uh, something like this. The title changed. Um, it used to be Notion Like a Pro. Now it's from zero to Notion because I realized that a lot of people actually don't know about Notion, are not aware, never tried it before. So apologies for that one subscriber. <laughs> I saw you coming in early on and you, if you're expecting a you know, super deep dive on how to structure a system end to end, that's not going to be today. But um, we will come soon. So hang on tight, follow me and we'll, we'll have some fun real soon, I promise. So the promise here... Uh, the promise I made to you before uh, this seven minutes a super emba embarrassing delay is how to nurture your best ideas and cut your brain some slack. And the second part is perhaps even more important than the first one. Um, and, you know, we talked about five steps of building a knowledge management systems that you will actually use. Um, three tips to uh, capture and organize content fast. A strategy to keep everything one click away. Um, it, this, this stuff is for you if you struggle keeping up with just the volume and the variety of information that you're exposed to every day. Uh, it's certainly one of my problems. Um, some might say that my hair condition, if you could call it that way, <laughs> is related to uh, the uh, excessive exposure to vast amounts of content. I don't buy that. I don't know if, uh, up to what point. I, that is true, but it's definitely true that I spent the last uh, 15 years of my life learning and diving into in and out of you know fairly interesting complex uh, topics from satellites to laser physics to uh, data analytics. And now 
um, I landed it into data management and I want to tell you a little bit about that so let me let me so this is notion by the way so we are straight into into the product it's just a page these are called toggles we can toggle stuff in and out and just get it out of the way uh, and you can always build a toggle with a command I'll show you later but um, okay, so part one, so this is the high level structure, right? We have part one, part two, three, four, then uh, I'll show you uh, the actual you know, thing in, in Notion, and so that will take a little bit of time. Uh, the three tips, the five, the five steps, and, and the strategy. And then the next step, so we'll, uh, we'll talk about what's next if, you, if this stuff is for you. So my goal right now is to explain the context of this and give you all the ingredients you need to work out whether this stuff is valuable for you or not. So let's do that. <laughs> so part one, what's going on? Well, we're here because of what we just said before, but also because we are busy, right? We are stressed out. There is so much of everything at all times. And I don't know how, but we are expected to make sense of this, to absorb it all, to know, and to um, use that knowledge in context. Uh, all the time with with no excuses. I don't know if you feel that way, but you, I definitely do feel that way. I'm a content creator now, so perhaps that's why this is even more true. But I guess even if you work in a company um, uh, with a small company or a large company, you do you're constantly consuming information, right? You're reading stuff um, and and you are thinking around those those ideas and producing more ideas, more decisions. So. We are, if you, if you want, we are information processing machines. We're constantly, constantly getting inputs and transforming them, applying our knowledge or our biases and producing more output. Um, so it really, like, it doesn't matter if you're a content creator or a teacher or a team leader or simply, you know, uh, a student, like someone that is not working in an organization, they just want to learn. And by the nature of being a student, you consume a lot of information. Um, so there is a there is a, everything too much. Uh, we are overwhelmed. So what we need is a way to manage it, right? Is a way to allocate the minimum amount of mental resources we need to capture, to organize, to use, and to reuse information. You know how many times. Maybe I'm jumping the gun, but um, let me let me give you the who am I first. So I'm I'm a husband, a father of of, a, of one uh, two year old. <laughs> I'm an entrepreneur. I love connecting ideas and people. Uh, I'm a hybrid between technical and non technical, so a bit of a both uh, mix of backgrounds there. I'm a podcast uh, host and producer, the Data Project, and um, this is this is the, the 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 plug. If you haven't heard about the podcast. Definitely add it to your podcatcher, and you'll understand why in a moment. Um, so, how did I get there? So, very simple: from satellites to machine learning to laser and quantum physics. That, that's my pre-data, if you sorry, if you want. Um, then I ended up doing some science with data. Uh, you know, what we call data science, which parentheses to me doesn't really mean anything, but we'll get there maybe in the future. Um, Okay, I'll tell you now. Just because you know, what what else would you use to do science, right? Science is a thing. It's a it's a mindset. It's about observing the environment, formulating hypotheses, and testing them. And if you don't use that, of like, what else is there? Is it gut feeling? Like, so I don't know. That's that's perhaps a different conversation. But I got into data science, and I realized that there is no science without engineering. And by the way, I'm using toggles here in Notion, so we'll we'll go through the table of contents together. Um, so no science without engineering. So I did a lot of engineering work and then I realized actually data can be an asset if we leverage it well, but it can also be a liability. Um, so how can we leverage it, leverage it as an asset? You know, what are the things we need to do to do that? And that's what led me to start the data project. Um, so I'm, that's what I'm doing now. And then I realized that my data was all over the place. So I had this interesting moment where I was stuck in a way 
because I, ha I had so many ideas, right? I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I wanted to start a podcast. I want to start a business. I want to be a, you know, a good dad, like learn to be on top of things. You know, which childcare to send your, your daughter to? Or, you know, what are the, what are the tips when uh, they cry and you know what to do, you know? So do a lot of reading. Like, well, it's mostly stuff that everybody would do, right? But at some point, I don't know why, I realized that it was just too much. I couldn't physically hold the, that amount of information in my head. And you, you have to say, you, you must say, like, you might, you know, didn't done quantum physics, machine learning, you must be smart. I don't think so. I don't think I'm smarter than anyone else. Um, I'm pretty much average in that sense. But I do have something that is less uh, developed than I think most people, which is memory. Um, I've always struggled with this. I mean, this is a real story, and I'm not... It's just... Um, it's hard to explain it because people wouldn't you know, believe me, um, but it's true. I my memory it sucks. It's unreliable. I only remember things if I really understand them. Um, if there is an emotional sort of an ex a larger experiential uh, uh, aspect to the memory, not just the information itself. So dates, numbers, I'm the worst, right? Email addresses, forget about it. <laughs> so, so. I've always been, I always envied people that could remember everything and always be on top. And, you know, to me, they look like machines, you know, nothing slips through the cracks because there are no cracks. Well, inside my head is full of cracks. <laughs> so, so that was, that was, that was this weird, weird feeling, right? I wanted to do all the things I wanted to do, go and change the world, but my memory was letting me down. And my data was all over the place. I needed to manage it. And uh, that's what led me to Notion. So a disclaimer, which is probably already figured out. Well, well, the first one, I don't have any commercial relationship with Notion whatsoever. I just love the product uh, because it's different, it's bold, it's, it's innovative, and it's flexible. And we'll get to all of this in a moment. It's not yet another tool. Uh, it took me three times to realize this. As in, uh, I approached the product the first time, and I was like, yeah. The second time, people are you know, really that lacking me, you know, mates at work saying, hey, you should really look into Notion because I'm like, okay, okay, I look into Notion. I look into Notion the second time. I was like, oh, okay, yeah, so it looks good. But I mean, what's the big deal, right? And the third time eventually clicked. And I wish I sort of wasted a year. Now, I wish I had the ingredients to see the power of Notion straight away, which is kind of what I want to do here. Not to sell Notion itself. Because there are more, there are many other platforms like Notion that are popping up all over the place. So, like, there's no point in just selling one. But for the ideas that Notion represents, at least to me, and I'm confident, and I hope also, uh, I hope that these ideas will be beneficial to you, the same as they've been with, for me. So I don't have commercial relationship with Notion. That's disclaimer number one. Two, I'll take tangents. I've already done it, so we can tick that. I will forget about time, hopefully not. And some of what I, I'll say won't make any sense. Um, so I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll promise. I'll promise to give you more context. But if uh, you have any questions, you can always reach out to me at loris at datafoundations.com.au. Um, if you, um, I'll put some notes, metadata around the video, perhaps below on YouTube for how to contact me. Uh, there will be a workspace. So we're not, again, I'm jumping the gun and I'm taking tangents, but just bear with me. Some of this won't make sense. It's all good. Um, however, I am here to help and be useful. Uh, I want to learn from you. So don't be a stranger, reach out. And I want you to have fun because it's Friday afternoon here in Sydney and we should have fun. Okay, with that out of the way, let's explore one second my why. You know, why am I doing this, right? And I think there is an aspect of I love learning and I love helping. But to me, this, this idea of managing knowledge and learning with less effort is um, started really early. Um, I remember I used to go to my grandma. Um, pretty much every day, you know, after school. Well, school in Italy at the time, we're talking about 20, 25 years ago. We would go in the morning, perhaps 8 or 8.30 a.m., and then by lunchtime, 1, 1 30, we would get out, and my parents were still working, so I would go to my grandma, and she would cook amazing Italian things for me, 
but also she would tell me a lot of stories about you know the importance of studying and how much you know you have to be you have to become uh, um to become wise you need to read a lot of books and um, when you read a book she would, t- she would tell me take notes right take notes uh, always take notes because you never know when those ideas will come uh, um useful will be useful nona was right nona was right nona is right thank god she's still alive um nona was definitely right uh, but there is a problem <laughs> with that that all my notes the notes i took in the last 20 years uh, got lost who knows where they are and i can tell you like i'm a data professional so big taking backups is kind of my job you can't see but over there i have a uh, home server with you know standard synology thing some of you alberto if you're there uh, know what i'm talking about if you've never heard of what a home server is it's basically a computer that is always always on and it just saves terabytes of information backed up everywhere you know it's kind of a you know not a big deal but a decent setup to save my data so i don't lose data normally but because of the many sources of, of data that we have sometimes you either forget to sync something or you know life just happens but it's not just that it's also the fact that um there is a disconnect and here we, we we get to this part you know learning is changing changes are expensive there is a disconnect between what the file system what, our computers right the idea of the first computer 1950 well the transistors was was invented in 1946 so the first computers were around the 70s and 80s but the fundamental idea never changed right the file system this you save a file in a directory which we might call folder and inside that folder there's a bunch of files some of them are folders themselves so you have this hierarchical structure of folder inside folder inside folder and so on so that model hasn't changed for 60 years right at least from the consumer perspective from the per- the perspective of the user of the of the machine course if you talk to engineers they would tell you oh we have all sorts of technologies graph databases you know about advanced stuff but from the perspective of the user of us interacting with content with a laptop the we're still stuck with folders inside folders <laughs> which is quite remarkable and i'm not saying this is necessarily bad hierarchies are good but they are not flexible and so that's what i mean here with learning um is with changes are expensive the way that we extract meaning and i have some notes here but the so don't stress out because i'll share the stuff so you don't have to like i'm happy to just share the link and you you'll have um, at least a written reference but the way we we um, derive meaning in with digital assets digital files is by proximity like we create a folder we call it you know invoices may right and inside that folder we have all the files for may this year 20 2021 with all the invoices now an invoice could be used for tax purposes so that whole folder may uh, 2021 might be under tax so you've got tax and you have may and then all your invoices but the same invoice could be used for another uh, purpose maybe you just want to um, uh, sum up all the uh, income and expenses you have so new 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 need a new um, purpose for the same amount of data you what you need to do is take take it and transcribe it into a table in excel and then make manipulations on that table and then eventually you have your sums and say in may 2021 i earned x amounts of dollars right or i spent x amounts that's in inside the table now if you want to do something else with that maybe you want to sum all your earnings across different months well you have to copy that and put in another table and so you're creating you're constantly creating copies of, of copies of copies of copies and adding this logic on top of what you're doing um basically uh, um, increasing the fragmentation of, of your data uh, of your data so tracking changes is really hard and so what this folder inside folder what's saying and perhaps i can take just a screenshot here but what this is saying is um don't make changes right i literally just took a screenshot of of my uh, my funder don't make changes because uh, changes are going to be expensive not sure what happened there 
Um, don't make changes because they are expensive. So keep things as they are. And so, and this is one of the reasons why we have this immense pressure. You know, if you really don't want to lose data, right? If you're really trying to do the right thing, um, you have to think about the structure beforehand. The thing is, nobody really knows what the structure should look like until you do it. Now, if it's something you've already done a billion times and it's a cookie cutter, well, then you have your template, you have your hierarchical structure. There you go, right? Example, one episode of the podcast, I know that there's an artwork section, there's an input, there's an output, there's some agreements and contracts that I signed with who comes on the podcast. So that is a, as an example of a, of a structure, you know, one, one layer. Then one gets hierarchical because inside the input I have audio, I have video, I have, you know, other types of inputs. So, but the, but, but the thing is, every episode I publish, I learn something new and I improve the process. And, and I can't tell you how many times I broke my own structure just between two, two consecutive episodes, let alone three or four. Now, this happens all the time. At work, no matter what you do, you put things in places according to a logic that eventually changes or they might not be the same logic as someone else's. And the result is that we have copies of copies of copies and they're all over the place. Right, so good luck figuring out uh, an alternative. Well, good news is there is a way. And the way came to me, um, well, option A, we can move off the grid, you know, just forget about all this digital stuff, close your laptop, close the phone, go and get a piece of land, and we uh, just become farmers, enjoy life without digital, right? Because I, I thought about it a couple of times. But that's not really an option. So. What is it that I wanted? Well, let's start with what I didn't want. I didn't want another tool. So we can tick that. Didn't want another tool because tools are always limited. No matter how good they are, you hit a limit, you can't make changes, and you're stuck. And now you have to migrate to a different tool. I've done it many, many times. Not fun. But what I wanted was a system that was flexible, it was intuitive, it was reliable, it was sleek, and was smart. Now, the haha moment was Notion for me, right? Um, and I can tell you the story, but let's, uh, perhaps I'm jumping again, but it's important to clarify what Notion is and isn't. Notion is not a system. Notion is a platform. Notion is akin to Basically, the Lego blocks that you buy and used to play when you were a kid. Lego, when you buy Lego blocks, what you're buying is an interface, right? They built a thing, you know, colors aside, they, they built a system, a mechanism to uh, latch two blocks one with, with the other, you know? And they may make sure when, when they produce it that the distances are standard and that this thing works, that you can combine two blocks and you can do more things with those two simple blocks, right? That's what Lego does. Then what you do with the blocks is up to you, right? And you don't need to hire an engineer or a, a mechanic to, 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 to move the position of this block from here to here. Because if you realize that this orientation is actually more useful for what you want to do, you just take the block and put it that way. Or maybe, oh, I changed my mind again, I put it that way. Obvious stuff, right? So the question is, why our computers don't work like a Lego blocks? And that's what Notion figured out. And that's the reason why I and many, many people are realizing that there is an intrinsic power in thinking in blocks and letting the person that wants to realize the sculpture or build the prototype to build it. So you can focus on the functionality instead of focusing on how do I put these things together. Now, obviously, this is an analogy. It's not 100% true, but it, it gives you an idea of what this is all about. This is about being in control of your systems, approaching the problem of computing and interfacing with your laptops, which we're all forced to do anyways, as a, an evolutionary system-centric problem where it's not about what the system is now, it's about what the system is becoming. It's not who you are 
is who you are, who you are becoming with the system. So this growth mindset is really, I think, important to understand whether this stuff is for you or you, you know, you're interested and you want to go ahead. Because if you don't have, if you, if you approach this problem, okay, where's the solution? That's not going to work. You'll be disappointed a hundred percent. But if you're willing to say, Hey, I want to, I'm frustrated and I want to find another solution. And I understand that there is another way to do things, but I have little time. What I would love to do is be guided and get a bit of help on how to structure this. Then you're in the right place, and that's exactly what we're going to be doing today. Um, how did I, I actually? So what was my, I mentioned before three times before my aha moment? Uh, the third time was a year ago. Um, I Google Brain Operating System. I find the course by August Bradley. Uh, free on YouTube, but which you should definitely check out. And I'll, I'll send you a note if you subscribed. Uh, Notion Life OS series. Um, so he really like took a bunch of blocks. What August did, which is amazing, was said. He said, "Well, instead of just focusing on the blocks, which so many and it's overwhelming, uh, let's actually build a thing. You know, let's build a system together." And that's what he did. And what's, that's sort of what was the moment where I realized, okay, these are not just a bunch of blocks. This is not yet another tool. This is a platform. It's like going to Bunnings here in Australia, buying hammers and saws and whatever, you, you know, nails and glue, come back home with, with your timber and build a thing. Kind of different, right, from anything that there is out there. And this is not new, by the way. Notion has been around for more than seven years. Last evaluation was two weeks ago at $10 billion. So... They definitely pioneered this idea of letting the user build their system, um, and so essentially jumping the 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 developer the developing stage. Why right? there's not the, there's not a bunch of developers or designers deciding what is right for you. There is you with a problem and all the tools you need to build a solution very quickly without being a developer. So kind of cool. Um, so where I'm now, well, i am made thousands of experiments. I used what I know about design and information systems to build my own system. Um, inspired, you know, the foundations are similar to what you, you, you might have seen um, in, um, the, in August Bradley YouTube channel, if you're familiar with that. But then I I'd obviously took a tangent and built my own systems on top of it. And the system I built powers everything I do from, you know, it's my CRM, it's my expenses uh, system, it's my project management, it's my content management, my knowledge management. So and that's why I'm here, right? Because I realized, hey, there is so much potential. Like you can actually solve a lot of problems all in one tool instead of paying for five or six of them and then figuring out how to stitch them together. I don't want that stitching to, to happen uh, outside of the system. I want a system. I want a thing where information flows from here to there and I can reuse information how, however I want and as many times as I want without creating copies. Um, and it's, it's all possible. Uh, it's all possible in Notion. Now, okay, we, we figured that out and we are uh, already half an hour into it. So uh, perhaps I should um, skip a few parts, but... I want to clarify first what Notion is, and then I'll, I'll we'll jump to some demo. Um, Notion is a um, Lego for software. The, the simplest way to explain it is Lego, but instead of having actual plastic blocks, the blocks are pieces of software, functionality of software. What Notion is not, is not your knowledge management system, because again, it's a platform, it's not your project management, it's not... Um, but it is a set of blocks <laughs> to do that, that. Um, and it's actually a, a, a you know you can you can learn a lot. So let me go back here. It's a set of blocks you can use to build those things. It's actually fun, and to me it's kind of like a game. Um, and I'll show you what I mean. Now there's also a bunch of hype around Notion. Obviously, you know people call it you know the, the platform to build your second brain. I don't think you can build a brain in Notion. It'd be nice if you could, but you you cannot. But it does help your brain in the sense that it does what computers do best it, they remember things <laughs> you know um, but yeah it's it's not a tool i think the right way to, to look at this is a platform 
So that's really, really important. It's a platform. It's, it's like the, the bunnings you go, you buy your, your tools and you build whatever you want. So what is knowledge then? Well, knowledge is the ability of using information in context to do something, right? You know when you find patterns in information, so you can say, oh, that file relates to that file, which is actually related to the other file. And now you have context, you have um, you have um, a multi, multi-dimensional understanding of the problem. It's not just one file. And now you have more, more, for lack of a better word, pieces of information. Then your ability to apply that is what no, gives you knowledge, right? Um, I think. At least that's the definition I like. So what the pro- what's the problem? Well, I'll show you with the data project. So this is what... Ideally, you think you would say, I mean, let me zoom out a little bit. Okay. So I, I produce a podcast. I, each episode starts with an idea and ends up with the final episode, right? Now, in theory, when you, when you study the system behind it, it'd be nice to think of it as a line, right? It's a bunch of stages, the pre-recording, when I talk with a guest, you know, we align. Then there's recording, then the editing, exporting, distribution, and promotion. But that's not what happens, right? Reality is kind of similar to this, right? It's more complicated. There's Surely there's an alignment, you know, pitch, schedule, recording. Then I write a number of elements in the, in the show notes, and also I use them for the introduction, you know, why listen, um, and that from that sometimes I extract a video of three minutes, then there's the uh, post recording. I need to edit and change those video files because they're raw and they're not optimal. To they're not ready to go live. Then I need to prepare the artwork. So this the Canva stuff. I use Canva, all the artwork there, and that is the editing process. Now from the editing, there's a number of files that I generate. You know, there's text for the transcriptions. There's audio for the actual podcast. Uh, there is video that you don't see here, perhaps. Um, where's the audio? There's no video. And then from uh, the uh, the audio itself, I have... Oh, yeah, it is. There you go. You got moments. You got full video episode. That stuff goes on YouTube. So you know what I mean, right? And you see what happens here, that the the text that I extract from the editing phase goes to the website, but also goes to the newsletter in a, in a different form. So I have this multi-dimensional... No, so I start with a piece of content, you know, the episode being recorded. You could call that one piece of content. But then I make transformations, I, I act on it, and the result of me interacting with this thing produces more things. And so uh, to have, like, I need help to... I needed a system to track where are my things... You know, what am I doing with these things and where are they going, right? Because if I don't have that information, I can't manage it. So here you see the stark contrast, right? Like the idea of our hierarchies of folders inside folders, it's immediately evident that it doesn't really work in real life because things are complicated and not just you know, on, on one line, right? There's another, another level, and I'm not going to expand this because there are a bunch of notes, but there is a difference. Our brain is not structured in folders. <laughs> there's, a, there's a network of neurons all interconnected, you know, and you, if you simplify that you know, immensely, you just see a web of nodes connected with edges. That's the architecture of our brain. That's what allows us to think. And if you think about it, we don't, we don't even realize this, but you can think about anything from different angles and perspectives and you see relationships between objects right or people like you and your wife or your husband there's a relationship there's a relationship between the plastic on this um sunnies you know on, on the frame the metal on the frame and the glass in the lens there are built in a relationship um real real life is is everything around us is made of relationships you know there is never something in complete isolation even, for example, this block, well, this block is right here in space, but you can look at the block from a different angle and you would see a different version of the same block, 
right? And photographers know that really well. It's what you do in photography when you change, when you worry about the composition of the image and you try to find the right angle to express the idea that you want to express. There's an infinite amount in real life, but when we are trying to model the world that we need to work in with our laptops, all we have is this bloody folders inside folders. And I really think that that from an architectural standpoint, is the reason why we get so frustrated. And that's what Notion is really good at solving or helping you to solve. So what is, so we here, because we want to build a knowledge management system. Uh, what's a knowledge management system? Well, if you look it up on Wikipedia, is the collection of methods relating to creating, sharing, using, managing the knowledge and information of an organization. It's a multidisciplinary approach to achieve organizational objectives by making the best use of knowledge. Now, you can apply the same thing to the individual, <laughs> me being an organization of many parts of the brain and many organs. It's the same stuff, right? That's the what. Why, why do we want to do it? Well, because you want to achieve objectives like improve your performance, uh, become more competitive, innovate. Uh, share lessons learned, and that is massive, you know, instead of having that tribal knowledge in our heads, we want to share it with other people, and we want to integrate, we want to improve, continuous improvement of the organization in the context of Wikipedia here, but continuous improvement of yourself as well, right? So that's what a knowledge management system gives you. Okay, so is this workshop really about Notion? No, this workshop is about the principles to build a knowledge management system that you can reapply uh, with another tool. And now, okay, so that's all my introduction, right? Why are we here? What's going on? What is Notion? What is this? Now, let's actually jump on the doing part of this and see um, how do we build it and what are those three tips, five, strategy, five steps and one strategy. So with, with, this, with the focus on, on this one, let's start with the three tips. Oh, maybe I just show you the thing. I'll show you, I'll actually show you Notion um, and we'll, we'll get to the tips later. Let's see. Okay, so if you sign up for this workshop, you'll see something like this. The, the, um, this is called a workspace and it's called Zero to Notion. Um, you will find a, a shared section and that will have this file or folder called workshops and which is a page in Notion, right? Um, you can change that cover, you can reposition it, um, you can change the, um, the, um, uh, the icon of the page and it will change automatically. You can share that instantly with someone with a link and that will give you directly a link that you can uh, use to share with someone else. So it's effectively kind of a website, but it's not really a website. You know, there are notes that are ready to be shared with a link, which is kind of cool. But it's, a, I mean, effectively is just a page, right? So let's jump to the first workshop, which is this one from Zero Notion Zero One. And then let's see what, what I want to, you know, see Notion in action. So the first element is quick capture, then structure, and then relate. So I think these are the three absolutely minimal things you need to be able to do if you want to start using Notion seriously, right? Let's start with the first, right? Quick capture. So quick capture is about the Notion Clipper, which is Oh God, help me describe it, is the most useful thing I've ever seen in my life. So it's this little, tiny little end here in your, in your browser. Uh, perhaps you don't, you don't see it really well and I don't know how to zoom dynamically. But what it gives you is an abil the ability to take any content from any source and quickly put it in, uh, in Notion. So for example, I'm on Data Foundations, I'm on, uh, on the podcast and I want to take, um, this page and I want to bring it really quickly in Notion without doing the usual copy, paste, control C, control V, right? I want to just save the page. So I go on a clipper and it will give an automatic title, podcast, the data project. And I'll choose the database and I want this one in the quick capture page. Not that I already said database, I shouldn't have. Just the page, you know, quick capture, I show you before is our page. I want to use, I want to take this 
website, this web page, and put it in my Notion page called Quick Capture. Okay, save, done. Now, you see this one appeared automatically. So Notion just, the Clipper, the Notion Clipper created a page inside Quick Capture, which is yet another page. Um, we open it, and what we find is the URL of the page, the uh, image that was on that page, and a bunch of text automatically extracted from the page for us. It's like, okay, you know, nice. It, saved, it already saved us like, a, few, a few clicks. Now, what if instead of a page, we want to get a book? And I'm referring to now Infonomics, oopsie, because I just published it, um, an episode with Doug Laney about his book, Infonomics. Say you're interested about the economics of information. I don't know why you would be, but say you, you are. Then with the Clipper, it's the same. You click on that, and it automatically extracts all this metadata. And let's say that you're happy with the, with the title there. Whoopsie. My mouse is hypersensitive. Okay, let's say that we're happy with the title there. And then uh, we want to just save it in Notion. Well, again, we will create another page with that title automatically title accordingly with the link with the image and the text okay so that's our step number one we know how to uh, import things quickly in uh, uh, notion let me reopen that real quick uh, we know how to open things quickly in notion now with the second step is to structure stuff so by the way, this stuff works on mobile really well. I can't show you because of my technical limitations, but if you um, have the Notion app on your, on your phone, you know, anything you find, share with Notion, same story. The Clipper is built in. You don't need to install it as an add-on. In the Notion app on mobile, um, just works out of the box. Now, the second step is structure. Um, so let's see what we mean by that, right? So for this example, I created three sections that are called media people and topics. Um, inside media, there is a table, very, very similar to an Excel table. And actually, before we do that, I wanna show you uh, the Excel idea. So I prepared a few pages here. Suppose you wanted to do the same and you wanted to save this podcast on uh, Google Drive. Well, you would open up a doc, you would write author, title, topic, link, Maybe you don't have to do that, but you know, since you have a link and an image, uh, the media next thought is, um, can I just create a header uh, that is standard across each document? And perhaps we put it actually as part of the header. I, can't, I don't know how to activate it, but you know what I mean, like the header in Word and try to use the same structure so that when, I f when I'm looking for something I know, I can just search and it will, if the search is, is powerful enough, it will actually search that metadata inside the file and will retrieve the file. Um, so say you want to do something like that, right? Very time consuming. I've done it before this, this workshop, but you'll have to take the image, a screenshot, apply this logic here at the top, then write your notes and you end up with a dead file that is not linked to anything else. Um, well, you say, okay, um, oh, by the way, this is an example of unstructured data, right? There is no columns, there's no rows, you don't have a way to sort this, the information inside the doc, it's just there. You're in control of how this appears. If you want to put author at the bottom, you would have to delete it from there and put it there. You know, this operation of sorting and rearranging is very manual and it's on one file or at a time instead of operating in batches. Um, so that's already a limitation. Uh, but what if you wanted to just filter for particular documents? Maybe you have a bunch of them. Maybe the, se the second example is the an episode of the podcast, the one that just uh, dropped a couple of days ago with Doug. Well, same story. You have to take a screenshot, and now you have two files. Right, these two files are completely isolated, and you have to remember the relationship between them. And what if you forget? <laughs> it's just my pain. Now, okay, you say, well, but there's Excel, right? So can't I just uh, build a table and put that information there? Example one, example two, the two titles, the type, podcast, author, links, and topic. You could do that. But now your Word files that contain that rich context are isolated from uh, the table in Excel. And you might say, oh, well, you know, there's a way around it. I can go here, I can go share, I can copy the link. 
then come back here and put an additional column called uh, you know actual doc uh, and put that link in there and I'll be sweet well yes but it would take you forever first of all second if the link changes you have to rechange the link manually and third you have to do it for every single relationship which is absolutely nuts like you're not gonna do that nobody does that okay so what's the solution well, is there another way well one is unstructured data in your docs one is the tables that are powerful because you can filter you can rearrange you know but what if we combine those two together what if we build a system that eat where each row is a file you can actually click inside the row and get all of the context that you want as if it was a word doc but you can also click out of the file and just see all the metadata. So all the things like title, type, author, and so on. Well, that's kind of what Notion did, right? That Notion is this thing that allows you to build tables, and now we go to the structure step, like MediaDB, I call the media database, it's an example, right? But this is a table in Notion, and what, so it's very similar to an Excel spreadsheet, right? The difference is that now I can click on the first cell and open it as an actual page. So the, the stuff that in Excel is, a raw, is, is along the columns, in Notion tables is also along the columns, but each row is a file in itself, and so you can open that file and find the information there. So this way of structuring is exactly what I was trying to do here, except now the, the, the file belongs to a collection of other files in Notion, the collection being the media database, and now I can do all sorts of things now. I can filter, I can classify, I can group them without creating copies or without maintaining this link. So that's the first sort of concept. Um, and here I create a bunch of columns just as an example, right? We have Infonomics, but there's also episode 20 of the data project. And again, I haven't put this information manually. I just use the clipper, right? I will go, I go, I will go here on my, uh, my podcast, episode archive, take the latest episode with Doug, then come back here on the Notion clipper, clip it up and put it into my media database, right? I can do that, this and call it test, and I will show you that inside that media database, there's gonna be a new page called text. Now we go here, and the new test page just appeared. Now if I open it, it looks empty, but if you wait a second, Notion is scraping from my own website, and it's putting that information back in context. Now all I have to do is just type, decide to type, well in this case is a podcast, the author, in this case is me, the topic is data and infonomics, right? Now I'm going to delete that uh, for a second because it's already there, episode 20. Now you can do the same with people, uh, right? So you can say, well, um, can I just create a table for, Loris, for, for um, all the people that I know, right? Well, yes, you can. So you go on LinkedIn and you find uh, me. And you say, oh, actually, you know, this guy looks interesting. I want to save all the information around Loris in my Notion system. You'll select your people table instead of the media. And you will just say, yeah, add Loris to my people database. So you will go here and you will find that Loris has been added. And in the case of LinkedIn, there's limitations on how much you can scrape. So you won't see uh, much. But what you can do is bring bring the photo i use this um, extension uh, on chrome I'll, I'll share the link but you can quickly download the photo the, the first image of any page it will be there so all you have to do now is go here take that photo drag and drop it into the photo uh, section has already been downloaded um, and notion automatically uploads that photo there so that again that's another way it's saving you time but at an additional level uh, you can do the same with expertise. Okay, Loris knows about data and data management and infonomics. Cool. But now, see that infonomics is a topic that we use here, but we use it there, down there here. So here's called topic, here's called expertise. But they are the same things. You know, it's still data, is still as a topic, is still 
as a tag you would call is still data management. So why do we have to have copies? And that's where Notion and linking comes in. So you could have another table with topics. One is data, data management, and infonomics. And now you can combine them together. And I'll show you the last step in the linking, or the what I call relate. The idea is that you will find, every time you find a media, you put it in your media database. Every time you find someone on LinkedIn that matters to you, or whatever, Instagram, you put in your people database. And whatever you find uh, a new topic that you're interested in, you put in your topic database. Then you link them together. And unfortunately, we don't have time. We're running out of time. I can't show you the linking, but we'll do it next Friday or actually next Wednesday. And we'll pick up exactly from what we left now. I will do the linking. And I'll show you how this linking then really helps you save time when, you, when you're looking for things. So what are the, um, uh, the last uh, bits I wanted to show you? Well, three tips. Databases are your friends. Use them in Notion. The second tip is separate storage from consumption. You haven't realized here, but these two pages, the one structure and relate, look, check this out. Media is an actual table. There's no arrow here. But if I go back to the page relate, inside media, there's an arrow. This is a view. I'm not creating a copy on the existing database. I'm just telling Notion, can you please show me the database in, in this new context. And by the way, you can customize it without changing the original. So I can hide a bunch of columns in uh, media inside the relate page. But if I go back to the structure page, media will still have all the columns. So this allow this separation between where you put stuff and what you do with your stuff is really, really powerful. And we'll, we'll reiterate that um, next uh, week. And the third one is capture quickly with your, your Notion Clipper. Uh, the five steps are going to be structure, relate, which is what we've done. Um, capture, we also done it, um, although not super well, but we'll, uh, we'll come back to the quickly ways to quickly capture content. Then the organization and the, and the use, uh, which we'll jump in next week and we'll actually explore how to organize content with these relations and that triangulation that I showed you before between the various databases. Um, so there you go, those are five steps. And the, the one strategy is start small, add complexity when you need it. I started with very, very, very basic tables and now the system is um, <laughs> very, very complicated. <laughs> um, and next next week I'll, I'll give you a, a hint of what's actually possible. I'll show you the, the behind the scenes of the data project and I'll show you the machine, right? What happens and how these pages in Notion allow you to uh, make sense of it. So if you want to learn this stuff, and this stuff is for you, I'm launching a new um, email course. It's five bucks because it's the minimum amount of, of money that I could charge on ConvertKit. Uh, it's going to be free for those that subscribe to this live workshop. So um, I'll, you'll get an email. It's not ready yet, but I'm working on it. You'll get an email with the, with the coupon code that you can apply and just get it for free. Of course, if you want to buy me a coffee, I love that. Um, but I, I'm really interested to get some feedback from you and see what's going on and how this helps you. The next live is going to be on Wednesday the 10th. Um, so next week on Wednesday in five days, see different time. We'll try the afternoon in Sydney and which is going to be 8 a.m. in uh, Europe, Central Europe time. We'll see how that goes. And uh, ultimately, I just want to say that before I let you go, there's a ton of courses out there, but I have experienced them. I've tried them, a bunch of them, and they're time consuming. They are these monolithic pieces of information that are dumped on you 10, 12 hours. And it's just, you know, I had the luxury of having that time. But if you don't have time, I don't want you to miss out, which is kind of why I'm doing this. Now, if you, if you continue to have time and you can join me live, you know, by all means, I love to show you my system and build something together every week. But if you don't have time to do that, then the email course is perhaps the first step you can take to uh, avoid those road bumps and roadblocks that most people find when they start in Notion. It looks cool. It looks powerful. There's a lot of hype around it. But then you start using it and you get stuck. And there's a very, very simple reason for that. We are not software developers. Most people are just used to 
the, the folders inside their other folders. And when they get into Notion, all of a sudden they have to understand tables, relations. You know, it's, you know, it requires, a sh it's not complicated, but it requires some guidance and new mental models for how to think about this stuff. It's 131, gotta cut, cut the stream. But what I wanna say is that uh, this has been an absolute pleasure. I don't know how much this is being <laughs> is useful for you. Uh, we had a bit of uh, a bit of delay, um, but uh, you know, ultimately we made it, which is what matters. Showed up. Uh, it's Friday. Enjoy your weekend. If you have any questions, follow up with me. Find notes and links in the metadata around the video, probably below. And um, take care. Ciao.